All right, welcome back everyone to this video. Now we're going to take a look at our part CPU particle specifically. We're gonna take a look at this node and what it can do. Now, if we zoom in here, we can see that it just has some particles that just drop down. Now we can change a few of these things by just going to the right-hand side of our properties. And you can already notice that I've already given it a 64 for the amount instead of eight. Okay, so that is one thing to note. Uh, but we'll revisit that. Now, another thing that we can take a look at is if we scroll down, we can take a look at the angle, the scale, color, and then specifically we'll look at gravity and direction. Now, gravity and direction is, well, kind of the way that the particles will go. Now, for the gravity, I'm going to turn that to zero, and the direction, I'm going to turn that to zero as well. All right, now the question is, well, what happens if I want my a fire, for example? Well, fire usually goes up. So in this case, what I can do is give it a gravity of 9.8 or let's say 10, honestly, of not the positive, but the negative. If we go negative, it'll go upwards. Now we can imagine for the direction, if we reset this and then go to one for this, the same thing will happen. Let me open up the angle again and select the spread to 180. We'll go to the initial velocity. We'll set the initial velocity to, let's say, 10. Maybe 30 is too much. Uh, the max velocity, we can change it a little bit. And the advantage of having these two being different is that we can see that some of them go a little slower and some of them go a little faster. So this is quite useful to have it a little different. Next, what we can do is go to the angle. Uh, and we can also make sure that we look at back at the spread. You might want to change the spread or the direction even, depending on what you'd like. Right? So again, you might want negative one if you want fire to go upwards, then zero for the X. And then for the spread, you can do 180. You can do whatever you'd like. Next, we can go back to the angle. Now the angle, we can give it a min of, let's say, 180 or 18, sorry, and then give it a max as well. Now these are the angles of the actual particles. Now it's a little hard to see because they're going quite fast, but each little particle will start rotating just a little bit, especially if we give it a angular velocity. We can maximize the velocity as well. And now you can see that each one is rotating even more. Next, we can change the scaling. The scaling is the same thing. It will change its scale, whether it's size of the size particles. We can go from Instead of one, we can go 0.2 to two. So you can now see that some of them are really small and some of them are really big. We can also give a curve scale, or a curve, say. And I usually like to do something like this, uh, maybe something like this, maybe even something like this, depending on what I want to do. So sometimes I'll just play around with a curve scale, but this is something that you can definitely play around with. And lastly, the color variation. So the color itself, we can change the color to, let's say, one solid color. Or if I want to give it a ramp, which is always fun, what we can do is reset this color and change the ramp to whatever I want. Now you can see it starts from black and goes to white. So I can select the white and go to, let's say, kind of a dark red. Then change this guy over here to maybe a light yellow, kind of like that. And then maybe let's do like an orange, something like that. And there we go. Now we have a little bit of a darker tone for the coloring. Maybe we want like a bright red for the ending. And then of course we can change the actual color. This will also affect the gradient as well. You can see and just play around with these and see what you get. Now hue variation is very similar, uh, but I would suggest you kind of play around with that as well. And that's kind of most of the properties that we can use inside of Godot to take a look at our particles. Now, if we turn this onto one shot and we permit on, this would turn it into almost a fire blast, right? It starts emitting and then it stops emitting at some point. So you can kind of imagine what kind of uses you can have with the one shot. If we turn this on again and we turn on the randomness scale to one, uh, we turn on the explosiveness to one. Uh, maybe not the explosiveness because that's, uh, you know, explosive. I'll sometimes turn it up a little bit just to get a bit of, again, explosiveness, but not too much. 
The speed scale, I usually like to keep it at one. I'll like even slow it down sometimes, depending on what effect I want. And that is pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest taking a look at some of the other things. Uh, maybe drawing, especially. Drawing is very useful if I want fire. Obviously, these particles are in the shape of a square. If you want fire, you might want to put a texture of smoke. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for this tutorial. Hopefully this helped a little bit. And if you guys want a more in-depth uh, tutorial on how to make a fire effect, uh, I might do that in the future. So let me know down in the comments down below. So you guys enjoy this challenge, and I will see you all next week.